somebody said, I think you look energetic. All those words I just used, how can that make you not feel better? So I notice everybody hangs on to those cards when they have to do that. And one of the things I do, all these videos, Mark referenced in the bio, I've done like almost 500 now. And they're like two minute videos. I sent a feature one out on Monday. In fact, Kelly has a sign up sheet. We may give away a book later. And I'll just go off for some cards. And if you'd like, I can send you that video. But it's two minutes once a week, and people come up to me all the time. How do you think of something new every week? And I go, really? With gratitude? I said, it makes you frame and focus everything you have in your life versus what you don't have. And you notice here, occasionally I've learned not so much to do this in high school. I've tried this. I go, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll wait till we have a little more mature crowd here. <laughs> this is a little more our, our sweet spot here. So that's my exercise for embracing gratitude, understanding how we focus it. That's just between you. And in many cases, they're strangers. And I've done those strangers where they nailed me. People go, God, you're Mr. Energetic, Mr. Fast Talker. You look pretty old for a guy to talk so fast. I mean, it's all these things that they say. But I keep them all. And so I decided there was going to be five things I'm going to talk about in 45 minutes. The first one is embrace gratitude. That's my example of one of the ways that gratitude can reform and reframe your view of life, regardless of what's happening. I have all this death and destruction, all these things that happen to me, but it's not going to define me. It's just not going to define me. I have my own path, and that's why, again, I love to make eye contact with so many people. It's your individual path. The next thing is it takes as long as it takes. Gosh, I mean, there's so many examples out there. I very rarely ever use PowerPoint. Occasionally, I flash up on the screen. I've been doing big churches, and so they'll let me use some pictures. And I'll put Colonel Sanders up there. People start laughing. Somebody goes, I'm hungry. And I go, I, I just want, he's 64. I'm 64. You know, I just want you to know. I only started doing this professionally, if you will, a couple years ago. I know people are looking, God, he didn't look 64. They look, they were 63. But, <laughs> But it's How did you know? my son. But the thing is, is that it doesn't matter. It's your individual path. And I noticed when what happened with Dana. Dana was 30 years. I mentioned she died of a prescription pill overdose. Vicodin, oxycontin, all that nasty, nasty stuff. I didn't know if I was ever going to make it back, as I mentioned, but I'm going to keep putting one foot in front of the other, and I decided it takes as long as it takes, and it's your journey. And you just have to decide if you can get up the next day, which in most cases you can when you have a gratitude journal, which I'll talk about later, where you get to write it down every single day. It makes a gigantic difference in how you frame it. But you can't give up. So as I mentioned, Connor and Powell were 4 and 14. We lost our house. I lost my business. We lost all our money. Everything was gone. So that wasn't bad enough. I lost data. All the money was gone. So we had to go moving with a friend. Sleep on a phone mattress and things. And I remember telling Connor, I said, Connor, he was my four year old at the time, he's now 20, Powell's now 30. I said, I will not give up. He said, We live on a piece of phone, Dad. And I said, I understand. I understand. I said, he just, he, I'll tell you what, I think he was like in first grade or something. I said, Before you're in fifth grade, I will get you back in your own bedroom again. And I worked and worked and worked. I did multiple jobs and did these different things. I sold stuff and eBay and all these different things I could do. And finally, on August 31st, 2005, we walked up to this house in Kirkland. It still chokes me up. And I gave the key to Connor and Powell standing right next to him. And I said, open the door of the house. Pick out the bedroom you want. You have another house house. That was August 31st, 2005. The next day, Connor started the fifth grade. I did the one day to spare. And it can be done. But you can't, you can't give up. You just cannot give up. And I see people are giving up all the time. So it does take as long as it takes. It doesn't matter how old you are. Every one of us has an individual journey. One of the, the videos I did recently was, it's, is this my opportunity? I look at all these people's faces. Every one of you are is different. So here's the next thing. Embrace gratitude. It takes as long as it takes. Don't give up. Sylvester Stallone, Walt Disney, there's all these famous people that never gave up. We wouldn't have had Disneyland if Walt Disney threw in the towel after the first hundred banks or so. But the next thing is, you got to get rid of the junk in your brain. And let me tell you, we all have junk in your brain. How are you going to make room for gratitude? I'm so grateful for this, I'm so grateful for that. If your room is 
flutter up. I go by this cold sacks every once in a while. Now, I don't know about you guys, I think garages are supposed to be for cars. At least that's what I thought. And they're just boxes from just floor to ceiling. Just boxes. And there's like a little thing like this. I'm a good sized guy. I know you'd have to go like this to get into the center of it. And I go, why do they have all this stuff? It's just stuff. And when we, I know most of us, a lot of us drove up here today, but if you're in a car or whatever, when you're in your car next, notice the size of the windshield in the front of the car. It's like this deep, and it's about this wide. About two feet, by about five feet. And then notice the size of the rear view mirror. This is about the size of the rear view mirror. That's probably 200 to 1 or something like that. It's a pretty small percentage. So mostly pay attention to what's in front of you. Take a look here and glance back occasionally. If there's blue lights, I get it. You got to pull over. I saw some of those coming up from Seattle today. Unfortunately, didn't pull me over. But keep that in proportion and get rid of this junk. Now, when I get to do workshops, I will get to a little more one-on-one -on -one with people. And invariably, I say, why do you drive over stuff, pick it up, put it in front of you, and drive over it again? And I will tell you the number one example is, well, that's easy for you to say, but I have an ex-spouse that's a B-I-T-C-H. And I go, well, why are we talking about your ex-spouse? Because she ruined my life. So you keep driving over the stuff. Well, when did you get divorced? I'm 94. Yeah. <laughs> So that was like 20 years ago. And you're still talking about him or her or whatever it might be. You can't keep doing that. And so what I want you to do is when we clean out this stuff, grab your red paper, if you would. So when we clean out stuff, our garages and our brains and things like that, you've got to get rid of these things. So you have a piece of red paper. Now, I will tell you, the reason you have a piece of red paper, and you have two white cards, we're going to use one, is when you write on a red paper, the person next to you can't exactly see what you're writing. It's kind of difficult. And with what you're about to write, you don't want anybody to see this. So I don't have a ton of time today. Normally I'd give you a little more time, but I'm going to give you 90 seconds. And I want you to write as much and as fast and in the priority of what's the most important to you. Everything you're just irritated about you messed up on in your life. <laughs> Regrets, pissed off, made a mistake, whatever, dumb move, I can't, I know this, I need a half hour for this exercise. But the thing is, is you got 90 seconds right as fast as you can, everything you're, you're so just tired that you messed up on, or whatever it is, go.
just want to hear the highest percentages I can. So red, the person next to you can't see it. The other reason that it gives red is if we go to the stoplight and it's green, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody said stop. <laughs> so green means go. I mostly have the flashing green light in Canada. I don't get that. Am I like going or partially going? I didn't So you want to stop with this nonsense. You want to stop with this junk. You want to drive over this stuff. Keep driving over it again and again. It's ridiculous. So I'm now going to give you 30 seconds, and Mr. Mark Davis is going to be the judge on this. Whoever can tear that up into the most pieces in 30 seconds, I'll give a book to go. <laughs> Okay, stop. And take your little pile and just push it to the front of the desk. And Mr. Davis is going to be at the end. He's going to move over to the front of the So just push the little pile in front. Now I will give you a word of caution. Don't look away because I've seen people try to put together their neighbor's pieces of paper. That's not the idea. So Mr. Davis will check that in a little bit. Right here. Oh, yeah, right here. Oh, Tom? Tom, you're a winner? Yes, so. Good job. Wait a minute, I want to recount. So, I like to keep kind of recapping 